I think for starting now, um, one of the things that I would say, which wasn't said to me at the start, was it's okay not to know the answer. That, that I think there's a lot of uh, new members of staff, I'd, I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm one of those who went through this, where you get asked, students, students ask you a question, uh, you know, a factual question about the area you're covering, and you don't know the answer. And it's okay not to know the answer, because if you did know the answer to everything, we wouldn't need to do research. You know? um, it's then a question of saying, okay, well, go and find out. You know, that's interesting, I don't know. Go and, go and do some research and, and bring it back for next week. That doesn't necessarily make you look weak or, or a poor teacher in the eyes of the student. That's about acknowledging that there are limits to your knowledge. Um, and you can still be the person who comes across as knowledgeable and the expert in your field if you don't know the last little tiny bit of minute about your subject area. That's fine. Um, it's also okay to try something out and let it fall flat on its face. Partly because that's the nature of experimentation, but partly because different groups allow different things to work. So you can have a completely randomly selected group where one task works, and another randomly selected group where it doesn't, even on the same day. And there's no logical explanation for that. Again, that's fine. Um, that's the nature of the task. Um, that's a, those are two things I think would, which I would have benefited from.